On March 25th, Superintendent Don Austin signed an MOU with the teachers union that determined through a single line in that document that teachers will provide credit, no credit for the second semester. The removal of the grading system from our school district, one that's well known for its rich tradition of educational excellence, is neither a decision made lightly nor in haste. I would like to know why the board has not voted on the, on the grading policy due to COVID-19. Instead, basically as Steve has ind indicated, it was unilaterally decided by Superintendent Austin without input from students, parents, and the community on March 25th. Every other district in the nation that has decided on a grading policy has done so through a board vote. What you've done with credit, no credit, is inequitable to students taking honors and AP classes because they are putting in the work, they have putting in the work, but they don't have to show for it in their weighted GPAs. There is real fear of that no credit. And that fear is being felt by even our most motivated students. The student who had straight A's in Q3 can still fail. The student who had 100% in their class can still fail. The student who was struggling to bring up their grade to a passing grade by Q3, that student can still fail. Q3 grades that were completed while we were still in school are just being thrown out. And it is all or nothing during crisis schooling to get a pass for the semester. There is something just not right about this model that throws out perfectly good grades that have meaning and reflect the work of our children while they were in school. We're asking you to, as trustees, to direct Superintendent Austin to come back with options, especially at the high school level, that satisfy the California Department of Ed's grading requirements to weigh the policies with the lens of equity, but with the primary goal of first doing no harm to students. The policy we have right now, I think, does the best job of reducing stress for teachers, uh, for students, and for the community. And as Mr. Austin has made clear, um, while there may be some uh, concern about the grades, the scores, uh, what people might be missing out on, I think to uh, keep scores and grades in play right now would be uh, a disservice. I would like to have all the teachers write qualitative comments for all of the students. This way students can point to that on their college applications and say, look, I got an A in this class. Uh, and I think there's a reasonable compromise. As a former admission officer and someone very familiar with the college admissions process, having worked for the college board for over a decade, please know that admission officers are smart people, <laughs> that they will take into account the current pandemic situation when they're reviewing the files of your children. I don't want there to be a perception out there that the board uh, or board members might be at odds with the superintendent's decision. So I'll just say on my behalf that, you know, we as the board gave the superintendent this authority to make this decision. I, for one, support the decision um, for the reasons that I said at the last meeting. But, you know, imagine if we had not yet made a decision on grading. Imagine if we had not given the superintendent this this power, we had still been waiting to debate credit, no credit, and just compounded the uncertainty that our students are already facing, our teachers are facing, our families are facing. Um, I think that would have been a far worse situation. The school profile is it's one of the most important documents you have in the entire process, but it's one that flies under the radar for the, the casual observer, the person that's sending your, your, your kid to school, you're not thinking about a school profile. The school profile is the equalizer. And in our case, and this is the beauty, uh, we're going to have about two or three bullet points. We went to credit, no credit. Um, it did not impact a GPA for the semesters in which that credit was earned. There are whole states that are going credit, no credit. So I'm sure the colleges are going to see lots of everything and are going to be able to adjust and calibrate their um, their filters to find the kids that are the best kids for their school. Um, 
in terms of board policy and authority, I just wanted to clarify it. I think a couple of people touched on it. I, I, I mean, I've read our policy closely. I think it's unambiguous. Our, uh, the superintendent had the authority to make this decision. And I think it would be odd if the district, and it, and it seems like a reasonable decision given that a lot of other people are doing it. So I think it would be odd for the board to intervene in a situation where the superintendent clearly had the authority by board policy and by our emergency resolution. 